Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Julia at Home. I'm Julia, and today we are going to be talking about musical terms and how I taught them to my kids. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and also click that thumbs up button below. Normally I do composer study with my kids, but what I decided to do is to take a term and do what I'm calling basic musical terms. So what I covered in this study is instrumentation, rhythm, tempo, dynamics, and mood. Now there's much more you could talk about as far as introduction to music and musical terms, but I focused on these mostly because I want it to be a scaffold for us as we go into more composer studies. It gives us something to talk about when we're listening to pieces of music. I also was inspired by Squilt. And this is not sponsored at all. I just really like their products. So we have um, some of their products that I will show you in this video. And I also followed a blog post for some recommendations on music. And I will link to both those things below. One of the things I have from Squilt are these um, pages that just explain what each of these is. It defines instrumentation, dynamics, tempo, rhythm, and I double-sided them to save paper and mood. And I, I just, I printed them out and laminated them myself. Um, most, if not all, of the Squilt uh, products come digitally and then you can get them printed. We're going to start with instrumentation. So instrumentation refers to the combination of musical instruments used in a piece. Pretty simple, right? So this is a great opportunity then to teach my kids about the families of the orchestra and all the different instruments and listen to the instruments. And I did this a few different ways. I've had this Usborne first book of the orchestra for a while and we enjoy it and it, um, it actually plays music. <laughs> and you can go through and it goes through the different families and, it, and you can play what those different families sound like. So that's what the strings are playing during this. This is a really simple but good introduction for kids. We also have the CD. It's the orchestra. Um, it's Peter Ustinov reads the orchestra. And this is just a little bit more advanced. This is great to listen to in the car, but it also goes through, it goes through music in general and what music can do. And then it goes through the different families as well and the conductor. Um, so it's not super long. It's a little more in depth than the book. And it's also a good introduction. And we've listened to it several times in the car and um, it's pretty good. It's got, it's got excerpts from um, classical composers in there. So you're, li you're learning about the orchestra and you're getting exposed to great music. So um, this is a good option. There's also the Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra, uh, which is a performance that you can see. And there's actually a great recording of it here on YouTube that I have found for free. So I will link it below. Hopefully it remains free. And it's um, Benjamin Britten's Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra. And it's like narrated and again goes through the families with a theme. Um, played through and some poetry uh, put in there. So again, I will link that below. We watched that and I, we've actually watched it more than once and it, it's really well done. We also got the Meet the Instruments bundle from Squilt and this has several different components of it that I will show you. So here we just have cards and on the front is the instrument and then on the back it tells you what it is and some facts about it. So the clarinet. It also has cards for the entire family. So this is the card for the Woodwind family. Again, says it on the back and has the information. And I believe there's also the conductor in here. So what I had my kids do is uh, match all of the instruments to their family. So put them in their groups with the family card on top. And that helps them classify the different families of instruments and learn about them as they go. There's also a little set of matching cards, which I have in the rubber band here and it tells you it has a picture and then it tells you what it is and what family it is and the backs are all the same so you can play uh, you know the matching game where you flip the cards mm -hmm. over and try to find the match and um, there's quite a few cards so it's it's a little bit difficult but it's definitely a good way of getting the kids to learn and remember the instruments there's also a bingo game so it comes with a bunch of different bingo cards and in here I have the little um, pieces and these these pictures all match up with each other so obviously the set goes together and so it's got these little cards with the instruments in it as well and um, all you need are some sort of counters to cover them up and the way we play is we don't do it just you know across or whatever but we try to f um, cover up the whole cover up the whole card for fun um, just so we get more learning in that way I also have these instruments from the tube instrument bundle we could just explore with these, but another great thing to do is use either the matching cards here or the bigger cards and 
um, match the cards to the instruments. So that's another activity. That's great for really young ones. There's not a lot in here. Um, so obviously you're not using all of the cards, but it's a good introductory um, it's a good introductory activity for younger kids. I also had two pieces of music that we listened to for instrumentation, and those were Canon in D and Cavalleria Rustica. And I will link to YouTube videos of them both below. You will recognize Canon in D. Um, you may or may not with Cavalleria Rustica, but we listened to it, and um, with Canon in D, I found several different um, instrumentation, versions with different instrumentation. So I believe I had one with just piano, one with full orchestra, one that was strings, and we listened to the different ones and, um, and had my kids try to identify what instruments were playing in that version. So I encourage you to do that, and you can do that with all different pieces of music. So if you have a favorite piece of music, or let's say your kids do, mine loves Star Wars right now, so um, we did actually listen to Star Wars theme, kind of got off on a tangent. Um, after one of our lessons, but what I could have done was seen if I could find the Star Wars theme or the Darth Vader theme on various instruments and had them listen and identify them. So that's a really fun way to experience the different sounds of instruments. Next is rhythm. Rhythm is made up of sounds and silences. So you may not know what rhythm is, but you have heard it. <laughs> um, so I had three pieces of music for this. Two are classical pieces. There's um, Pixicato Polka, and Minute Waltz, and again, I will have them linked below. But then I was doing some research and I found that um, the Beatles song, I believe it's I Wanna Hold Your Hand, and I will double check and also link it below, um, has a great rhythm in the background. It was like a... Something like that. It's something like that, you know, it's just a fun rhythm. So we also listened to that and, and clapped the rhythm out with that. And then we played a fun game. So what you can do is come up with your own rhythms and have them repeat. So, um, you know, like I just did, we could do and have them repeat that or have them do. And I also used the TTs and TAs. My kids are, are comfortable with those because we've been doing preschool prodigies, which I will also link below. He has some great music lessons for preschoolers, and I believe he has like a toddler version and um, an elementary version now. We mostly just use the original preschool prodigies, but linked below. So you play a game and you repeat, and after I did it, I had them take turns making up mm -hmm. the rhythms. And a variation of that is a game I found called Poison. And basically there's one rhythm that you choose that's poisonous and you're not supposed to repeat it. So for example, you could choose like ta, 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 ti, ti. And so as you're repeat, having people repeat, let's say I do ta, 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 they repeat ta, 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 ta. But if I do ta, 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 ti, ti, if they repeat, then they're out. Now, I don't actually make them out because there's only two of them and the game would end really fast. But it's just kind of a fun variation on it. They think it's funny. Um, so that's, those are great rhythm games. If you know any other rhythm games, please comment below and everybody, you know, read the comments. There's, you know, people have some great ideas and we can also share ideas as we go on. Along with rhythm, you can also do musical notation. So things like quarter notes, half notes, whole notes, they're part of the rhythm of the piece. Also rests are important to the rhythm of the piece. Um, and I didn't really go into this in depth with my kids. My daughter is doing it a bit in her piano lessons and I feel that my son's still a little bit young, so we're gonna come back to that later, and I will have new materials for that and probably make a new video for that. But if your kids are at an age and you feel comfortable teaching that, that would be a great thing to teach in the context of rhythm. Next is tempo, and tempo is the speed of the piece. So is it really fast? Is it really slow? Is it somewhere in the middle? And there's your basic tempo markings, adagio slowly, andante at a walking pace, moderato moderately, allegro quickly, happy. Um, so we just played a fun game where I would shout out, you know, Allegro, and they'd run around the room, and I'd shout out Adagio, and they'd have to slow down. So their movements were marking with the tempo of the piece. And then, of course, we listened to music. And one really fun one to do here is Flight of the Bumblebees. I will again link below. I found a YouTube video of a brass, uh, I want to say it's a quintet, uh, playing Flight of the Bumblebees. And it is incredible. Um, it is so well done. So, um, and that, of course, is Allegro. I think it's actually above Allegro. I forget what's faster than Allegro, but it's, it's very, very, very fast. Um, so that's a fun way to experience tempo as well. 
Next is dynamics, and dynamics are the louds and softs of the music. Um, and you've probably heard some of these terms before if you've had any sort of tangential relationship with music, but if you haven't, that's okay. You can learn along with your kids. Piano is very, very soft. And forte is very loud. And there's, of course, fortissimo, which is even more, and pianissimo, which is even more soft. Um, hopefully you could hear me there. Um, so we focused on those basic two along with, I introduced crescendo, which is getting louder, and diminu diminuendo, which is getting softer. Um, and so we again listen to pieces. We listen to Hungarian Dance Number no. 5 and Claire de Lune and these both have kind of extremes of, of the pianos and the fortes and um, you can often hear the crescendos and diminuendos as well. So we listened and tried to identify what dynamics were happening at the time. And then a game very similar to our tempo game where I say piano or forte and they have to um, act or sing or shout or whisper depending on what I am calling out to them. Um, and you can do this in a variety of ways, in a variety of places. This would be a fun game for the car, as long as they're not too loud. So that's dynamics. The last thing we covered was mood. It's how, how the music makes you feel. So this is much more subjective and a little harder to describe. Um, but here you can see they used little emoji faces. Um, how does listening to the piece make you feel? This is a great opportunity for descriptive words as well. We listened to Ride of the Valkyries and the theme from Swan Lake, and they're very both very dramatic. So um, it's great for descriptive words. My kids thought Ride of the Valkyries reminded them of Star Wars because they love Star Wars, and it does. It's kind. Of, I think John Williams probably pulled from it uh, when composing um, Star Wars and Darth Vader's theme. Um, and Swan Lake is very romantic and melancholy. Um, so again, it's great for use of words, but also you could dance the mood. You could draw the mood. Um, I'm sure there are other things you could do to convey the mood. So if you have more ideas, let me know. I guess you could emoji the mood um, <laughs> if you wanted to use some sort of screen tool. So that's what we did for my introduction to basic musical terms. It does not stop here though. We are going to continue to do a composer study. In fact, right now we are in the middle of studying Dvorak. And when we listen to a piece, we talk about the instrumentation, the tempo, the rhythm, the dynamics, and the mood. So we keep building on what we've learned and we will learn more terms as we go ahead. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Please comment give a thumbs up and subscribe if it was. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask them in the comments. I love answering your questions and interacting with you. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you later.